Today is Monday, October 7th, and I'm just wondering what to call last night's Cowboys game against the Steelers. Could it be season turning? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Was it impressive? Uh, that's a little bit too strong. It, was it gritty? Yeah, perhaps that's the right word to describe last night's win. Gritty. Introducing Star Power Smart Home Solutions, where cutting-edge technology meets effortless living. Control your entire home with just a tap on your smartphone. Adjust the lights, set the temperature, ensure your home is totally secure, all from the palm of your hand. Experience the ultimate solution in comfort and security for your family. Start by going to the website, GetStarPower.com. That's GetStarPower.com. And now, a word from our title sponsor. Are all financial advisors fiduciaries? Fewer than you think, not knowing could reduce your lifestyle. Hi, I'm Mitch Kramer, founder and CEO of Fluent Financial. A fiduciary is a regulatory term to reduce conflicts of interest in wealth management. A fiduciary always works in your best interest. A non-fiduciary advisor might put their compensation or company ahead of yours. At Blunt Financial, we are certified financial planners acting as fiduciary advisors. To learn more, go to FluentFinancial.com or Fluent Financial's YouTube channel. Crest is again proud to sponsor the McKinney Police Association Golf Tournament and Car Raffle, October 24th at TPC Craig Ranch in McKinney. Sign up and purchase a raffle ticket for the opportunity to win a brand new Crest Cadillac CT4. It's easy. You go to Crest cares.com you don't even have to deliver mckinney to win grab yourself a raffle ticket sign up at crestcares.com perhaps win that new vehicle and do support the mckinney police association in 1993 bob opened the original bob steak and chop house on lemon avenue 32 years later the original bob still greets you at the original bob's and now his sparkling new Bob's at Craig Ranch has opened in McKinney. Same fantastic beef and fresh seafood at these two Bob's, each run by the Bob. Bob's Steak and Chop House. First, let me apologize for being a bit late with this morning. Just wondering, with the game ending after midnight, and me probably not being ready to record it till after one. I didn't feel I could keep my producer and wife, Mary, up that late. So here we are. You're not supposed to win when your quarterback turns the ball over three times, including twice in the red zone, costing you points. Perhaps you're not supposed to win when your only real offensive weapon, C.D. Lamb, has very moderate evening, five catches on nine targets for 62 yards and never got in the end zone. You're not supposed to win with 11 penalties. You're not supposed to win missing huge, important players on the injury list and then losing two more starters almost immediately after the game began. And finally, you're definitely not supposed to win playing in Pittsburgh and playing Steeler football against the Steelers. It certainly was a thrilling win last night. The Cowboys snatched victory out of the jaws of defeat with 20 seconds left on the clock. It's it's too early to say this will turn the season. But if the season does wind up successful, we're going to remember that final play. That final play that won the football game. 26 seconds to go. Dramatic. One play. Make the play. You win. 
don't make the play, you lose. And fours were wild. It was the fourth quarter, and the Cowboys were down four points. And it was fourth and goal at the Pittsburgh four-yard line. And it was a point where number four had to make a play. And he did. Coach McCarthy called a dangerous play on that fourth and goal from the four. He had his wide receivers completely cross the field, one from right to left and the other from left to right. Now, the idea is get one of them open running along the goal line. But this is dangerous against a Pittsburgh pass rush because you need time to wait for these wide receivers to work their way open. And and number four made a play that was almost perfect. Had Dak Prescott thrown that final pass a half a foot behind Jalen Tolbert. That's right, six inches. And by the way, Dak often does throw passes a bit behind wide receivers. But he had, had he done so on this particular play, Deshaun Elliott would have batted that pass away. Elliott had covered Jalen Tolbert about as well as you could ask him to. And had Dak thrown that ball maybe a foot or a little bit more forward of Tolbert, he doesn't catch the ball. So consider the window here. With the Steeler defense closing in, Dak had a window of about A foot and a half? Two feet? Hey, the ball's seven inches wide. He he had to get the seven-inch ball into, at most, a two-foot window. And he did it. It was a spectacular throw and a very good catch. It concluded a, a not very spectacular game. But it was tough. It was rugged. It was the kind of football the Steelers had become famous for, for decades and decades and decades, stretching back into the 70s when Chuck Knoll coached the team with Terry Bradshaw and Lynn Swan and Franco Harris and John Stallworth. How odd that Dallas would win against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, playing Pittsburgh-style football. Dak and Coach Big Mac orchestrated two fantastic, mind-bothering drives. They, They actually didn't hurry much. They took their time. The four, the two fourth quarter drives, one was 16 plays for 90 yards, and the other was 15 plays for 70 yards. All in all, it consumed more than 13 minutes of clock time. A mistake on either of the drives. A punt on either of the drives. Dallas loses the game. But when it was all over, the Cowboys are 3 and 2. And they're breathing a little bit easier with a schedule that just ahead includes Detroit, San Francisco, Atlanta, and the Eagles in their next four games. And on the way, Dallas may have found a running game. The running game has been terribly absent to start this season. Rico Dowdle, though, Sunday evening, 
had 20 carries for 87 yards. Now, that's not the kind of splashy night that grabs headlines all over newspapers and sports center. But it was way better than what they've been doing. And on the way, Dallas may well have discovered a partner at wide receiver for their star, C.D. Lamb. Jalen Tolbert caught seven passes, a team high, for 87 yards, a team high, including that nail-biting winner. But on the way, more injuries piled up. Rookie defensive end Marshawn Neeland ironically hurt a knee. And rookie left tackle Tyler Guyton left with a leg injury also. They both went to the locker room and didn't return. And and we wait to see how badly they're hurt that they'll be added to an ever-expanding list of injuries. But who knows what holds for the season ahead. But for one night, it is appropriate to call the Cowboys gritty, determined, focused, and a winner. Today's episode brought to you by Fluent Financial, Retire Sooner, Better Lifestyle. And by Crest Cars. There's good, there's better, and then there's Crest. By Star Power, Love Where You Live. And by Bob Steak and Chop House. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Just Wondering with Norm Hitzkus. If you enjoyed what you heard, please hit follow, and a fresh new episode will be delivered to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you know someone who might enjoy our work, please share it with them. I'm Norm Hitzkus, and I'm always just wondering about something. And I'm Mary Hitzkus, and I'm just wondering too.